We present the Video Mesh, a new data structure for video editing. The Video Mesh encodes the motion, layering, and 3D structure of a video sequence in a unified data structure. Intuitively, it looks like a paper cutout of the world. We illustrate our technique on a simple educational example. Constructing a video mesh begins with first tracking distinctive features through the sequence. Then we compute a Delaunay triangulation on each frame. The mesh linearly interpolates the motion at vertices, which is a good approximation where the motion is smooth. Users specify occlusion boundaries at a few keyframes using splines, which separates the components in the mesh. Splines are advected between keyframes by the optical flow encoded in the mesh. Now we change the viewpoint to reveal the geometry of the mesh. The user specifies the depth at a few vertices. Now the video mesh looks like a 2.5D paper cutout. Notice how the actor's hand occludes his body while remaining connected to it through the arm. Such self-occlusion cannot be represented by traditional layers without arbitrarily cutting the arm. In contrast, the video mesh naturally encodes these topological configurations. We use off-the-shelf matting to decompose the texture. We in-paint the missing parts of the scene using texture synthesis. Once we have the video mesh, we can use classical computer graphics techniques for special effects. For instance, we simulate a large aperture lens with a shallow depth of field by rendering the scene several times from viewpoints sampled over the aperture. The user clicks to choose the plane in focus. We can also composite a simulation of volumetric smoke. Note how the attenuation depends on the depth of the scene. This sequence features a static camera with complex occlusions between the columns. The user needs to specify only the primary occlusion boundaries. Since the camera is static, we interactively assign depth using simple image-based modeling tools. We insert a ground plane and model the columns and the actor as vertical facades. Since the actor is a single connected component in the video mesh, we can copy him in space and time to turn him into a crowd. Since we have 3D geometry, we can interactively manipulate the actor. We can also refocus the camera, move the camera, and simulate the vertigo effect by moving the camera backward while zooming in so that the main object does not change size. Since we have the 3D geometry of the scene, we can adjust the lighting as well as simulate a fog effect that accounts for the depth at each pixel. This allows us to render this sequence as if it were shot at night. This sequence features a moving camera in a scene with multiple rigidly moving objects. We use off-the-shelf structure from motion to recover 3D vertex positions and the camera path. In this case, structure from motion was applied independently on the chassis and lid of the copier and registered into the same coordinate system. We composite multiple copies of another video mesh into the scene while interactively changing the viewpoint. Notice the parallax induced by the changing viewpoint. The inset shows the input video. This video of a riverbank near the Notre Dame Cathedral features complex geometry and occlusions between buildings. We model the 3D geometry using the same image-based tools. We cut the mesh at the primary occlusion boundaries with splines, insert two ground planes, and model the buildings with vertical facades. The video mesh lets us move the camera onto the roof of the boat as it sails down the river.